Yo, what is going on everyone? It is Jacob Fett, and today I'm back with a brand new fan fiction. In today's video, we are jumping into the timeline of what if Obi-Wan had made the decision to train Luke Skywalker from birth. If you do enjoy these fan fictions, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. But with that being said, let's jump right into today's story. What if Obi-Wan had trained Luke Skywalker from birth? Part 1 the desert landscape of Tatooine stretched out as the embers of the Clone War began to flicker out across the galaxy. Obi-Wan Kenobi now found himself on Tatooine, a barren world of vast deserts and scum and villainy. He had made a vow to Master Yoda to watch over the son of Anakin Skywalker, who now rested in the warmth of his arms. The wounds of betrayal and loss were still fresh, yet a glimmer of hope sparked within Obi-Wan as he held the infant Luke Skywalker. In the quiet solitude of Tatooine's outskirts, Obi-Wan built a temporary shelter atop one of the canyons, hidden away. It's here where he would eventually build his future home, a sanctuary where the Force would be their guiding light. Even in a pit of distraught and darkness, after all that had happened, Obi-Wan knew he couldn't give up his trust in the Force. As the twin suns dipped below the horizon after their first full day together, casting a warm glow over the sands of Tatooine. Obi-Wan cradled Luke in his arms, feeling a surge of purpose wash over him. The decision to train Luke from birth had not been an easy one by any means, and he wasn't sure Master Yoda would even approve of such an idea. But now, as he watched Luke's tiny fingers curl around his own, in that moment, Obi-Wan was confident that he had made the right decision. Over the course of the next few years, Obi-Wan was not only a guardian but a mentor and a father figure to the young Luke Skywalker, raising him as if he was one of his own. When Luke became old enough, Obi-Wan began to teach him in the ways of combat, subtly at first introducing him to the simplest concepts and gently guiding him as he grew. They would spend their days amidst the vast desert landscape, with Obi-Wan imparting wisdom as they watched the twin suns rise and set with each passing day. Obi-Wan would oftentimes try and commune with his old master Qui-Gon Jinn through the Force, but only receiving silence in response. Even as Luke grew older, now roughly about 10 years old, Obi-Wan still remained hesitant, his heart heavy with memories of the past even after all these years. The betrayal of the clones, the fall of the Republic, and the tragic fate of his former apprentice, Anakin Skywalker, haunted him on a daily basis with some days being better than others. Yet in Luke, Obi-Wan found a beacon of hope, a chance for redemption amidst all of the past darkness. Staying hidden away from the Empire and the rest of the galaxy, Obi-Wan Kenobi and young Luke Skywalker lived a quiet existence on Tatooine for the first 10 years. The two keeping to themselves, never giving anyone a reason to suspect the truth behind their existence on the planet. Obi-Wan would take trips to the market only when needed for food or necessities, nothing more since Luke was under his direct care in this timeline. He had to limit his risk to the best of his ability, and in doing so, Obi-Wan would not learn that Vader had lived in this timeline yet, still believing that his former apprentice died that day on Mustafar. Obi-Wan and Luke really wouldn't see much in their secluded life on Tatooine, and for the first 10 years, Obi-Wan wasn't able to communicate with Qui-Gon in any way. Unsuccessful for so many years, he began to question if he had made the right decision in taking on Luke's training. As the years continued to pass by, Luke grew into a spirited and adventurous kid just like his father Anakin. Now about 15 years old, he spent most of his days exploring the vast expanse of Tatooine's deserts and canyons, taking in the surrounding area and creatures native to the desert planet. One day, as the twin suns beat down relentlessly on the desert landscape, Luke raced through the canyons, his landspeeder kicking up dust of clouds in his path, dodging womp rats and weaving through narrow passages with expert precision. Luke felt alive, the wind whipping through his hair as he pushed the limits of his rundown landspeeder, his piloting skills clearly reminiscent of his father Anakin's. Back at the hut, Obi-Wan sat in silence, legs crossed and eyes closed, his focus set on communing with Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan says softly, 
but still no response. Obi-Wan exhales a deep breath almost in disappointment in response to the last 15 years of having no communication with his old master, even after Yoda had specifically tasked him with just that. Obi-Wan thought to himself, maybe he had gone down the wrong path, maybe he should have stayed far away from Luke, never interacting with the boy. Obi-Wan inhales and closes his eyes once more, calling out to Qui-Gon for any sort of guidance. Please, master, he pleads out. It's time to let go of the past, Obi-Wan. The time to face your fears is now. You must commit and let go. Qui-Gon's voice says as the room becomes dead silent just moments after. Obi-Wan opens his eyes standing up, a new feeling of responsibility and purpose now shining in his eyes. Eventually, as he always did, Luke returned to their home, adrenaline still coursing through his body and he made it home just in time for their daily combat training, a ritual they had kept up since Luke was a young child. As Luke enters the hut expecting to find Obi-Wan ready to begin their training, he was surprised to see his mentor standing solemnly in the center of the room. Luke noticed Obi-Wan seemed to have a sense of purpose radiating from him. Obi-Wan knew that the time had come to reveal the past as he felt Luke was old enough to truly process the situation partially in thanks to the revelation with his former master, Qui-Gon. Sitting together in their home on Tatooine, Obi-Wan recounted his early years as a Jedi, stories of his old master Qui-Gon Jinn, Master Yoda, the Republic, his mother Padme, the Clone War, and the tragic fate of his father, Anakin Skywalker and the Jedi Order. Luke listened in stunned silence, his world basically shattered by the revelations. Yet, even as he was struggling to grasp everything Obi-Wan had just told him, Luke could feel a newfound sense of purpose in his life within himself. This is a key moment where Luke is starting to realize his true potential and role within the galaxy. With a renewed determination, he vowed to fulfill his destiny, wanting to bring peace back to the galaxy. For the next few months, Obi-Wan found old comfort in training Luke, teaching him now in the ways of the Force. They would spend their days in the secluded deserts of Tatooine, practicing with weapons crafted from bones and other scavenged materials. Yet despite his rapidly growing skills, Luke yearned for so much more. When's it going to be time for me to train with your real lightsaber? He would often ask, frustration evident in his voice. We've been using these sticks for months. You must learn patience, Luke, Obi-Wan would reply his voice gentle yet tinged with hesitation. The memories of Anakin's fall to the dark side still haunted him. Deep down, he feared the consequences of introducing Luke to the same weapon that had brought so much pain and destruction. On the windswept sand dunes, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker continued their training, their daily routine consisting of vigorous drills and exercises as Obi-Wan imparted every ounce of his Jedi knowledge into the eager Luke. As the weeks turned to months, Luke's skill with the makeshift weapons grew, and Obi-Wan began to see the time had come to introduce him to the next level of training, the lightsaber. That evening, as they sat inside their hut eating dinner, Obi-Wan reached for a weathered wooden box hidden beneath his bed. Inside, wrapped in a faded cloth, lay a piece of Jedi history, the lightsaber of his father, Anakin Skywalker. With a solemn expression, Obi-Wan unwrapped a lightsaber and handed it to Luke. Luke's eyes widened in awe as he laid his eyes on the elegant hilt for the first time. Obi-Wan explained the significance of the lightsaber, how it was a weapon of the Jedi, a symbol of their order, a commitment to peace and justice in the galaxy. Luke reaches out softly, grabbing the hilt for the first time, igniting the lightsaber, its vibrant blue blade springing to life with a crack of energy. Luke watched in amazement as the blade hummed and danced before him. And so, as the suns dipped below the horizon that night, Obi-Wan and Luke began a new chapter in their journey together. Under the dim moonlight, Obi-Wan began to teach Luke the basics of lightsaber combat, showing him the stances and forms that had been passed down through generations of Jedi. Luke's progress was slow at first with the lightsaber, but he was determined to learn driven by a sense of duty and a desire to follow in his father's footsteps. 
As the days passed, Luke's skill with the lightsaber grew and grew, and he began to spar with Obi-Wan, testing his newfound abilities against the Jedi Master. Obi-Wan watched with pride as Luke's confidence and control increased, knowing that he was one step closer to fulfilling his destiny as a Jedi. Obi-Wan and Luke Skywalker are in their landspeeder coming back from their routine training session. Luke, now 19 years old, has been showing remarkable progress in his Jedi training under Obi-Wan's guidance. As they navigated the rocky canyons, their conversation was interrupted as they rounded a bend to find a group of Jawas surrounding a droid who was on the ground, sparks flying in the air as the Jawas attempted to electrocute the dirt-covered astromech. Obi-Wan brought the landspeeder to a halt as he and Luke leaped out, lightsabers ignited. The Jawas, startled by the sudden appearance of the two, turned and fled, leaving the droid behind. Luke rushed to the droid's side, kneeling down beside him. We've got to help this thing, Luke says, looking up to Obi-Wan. Nodding in agreement, together they carefully lifted the droid into the landspeeder and drove back to their home unbeknownst to what they had really just discovered. All right, everyone, that is going to do it for today's fan fiction. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any other ideas for what if videos or scenarios, or if you want to see a part two for this one. Thank you all for watching, and until next video, may the force be with you.